Hi, and welcome to day 10 of our Read Through Psalms 119 challenge. Today, we are going to read Psalms 119, verses 73 through 80. The psalmist here starts with, you made me, you created me. He's saying this to God. He's saying, you made me and you created me. Now give me the sense to follow your commands. I love the Word of God, and I love just the heart of the psalmist. As we've been reading through already the last 72 verses, and now we're, we're tackling the next eight, we can see that this is a real person who's very authentic in his relationship with God. A lot of people think we can't approach God, that he is way up here and we're way down here. We're real small and tiny. He's huge, which is true but that we can't bother with him with the things in our life or little concerns that we have or maybe emotions that we have. And we, we feel guilty if we feel bad or sad or angry. And God here with the psalmist is just having, I mean, they, they have conversations. And the psalmist is very real, very authentic in how he feels, and he doesn't hold anything back. You know, there's really no need to hold anything back because God knows everything and he knows what you're feeling anyway and a lot of times we run to people we run to the phone and we tell people how upset we are how angry we are how frustrated how sick we are what we what we're upset about and here the psalmist instead of running around to people he goes to god and he expresses his heart to god and that, I think if, like Joyce Meyer says, if we would go to the throne more than we go to the phone and call people, our life would be so much better. And I just love that the psalmist has such a real dialogue, real um, just expression of his emotions to God and knows that God's not offended by that. The, the Word of God says, come boldly to my throne of grace. Now, I mean, we come with a healthy fear. <laughs> We're not in his face screaming at him. And, and, you know, sometimes somebody might because they're so upset. And God, he's not uh, offended, I don't think, by our honesty with him because he knows what we're feeling anyway. So anyway, let's get back to this. He says, you have made me, you created me. Now give me the sense to follow your commands. Help me, Lord. That God, I need common sense. I need the spiritual direction. I need you to wake me up because sometimes I don't have any sense. That's how I feel sometimes. Like, Lord, just smack me upside the head and give me some sense here. Help me to follow you because I keep screwing up. And I feel like that's kind of what he's saying. Give me the sense, Lord, to follow you because I keep not following you. It's kind of how we could say it. He says, may all who fear you find in me a cause for joy. We know from the past uh, scripture that we've been reading, the past verses, that the psalmist has been under attack. He's had people coming after him and hurting him and smearing his reputations with lies. And he's saying, Lord, could you help the people who fear you and know you find a cause to find joy in me, find a reason to find joy in me? That they would see something good in my life and not maybe not listen to what all the other people are saying. He says, for I put my hope in your word. If you notice, he, he does defend himself quite a bit in here. He's like, all this is going on, but I will, I will stay true to you. I will follow you. I will seek you with all my heart. And he says, I have put my hope in you, God. Could you like help these people who fear you to find something good in me and to find a reason to... Um, Find in me a cause for joy. And maybe he's even saying, find in me you, God. Because as they see me living out the word of God, may they see you. And when they see you, they'll find a cause in me for joy. Shouldn't that be the cry of our hearts every day? That God, when people see us, that they would find in me a cause for joy. That they would see God in me. That they would come to know Christ in me, the hope of glory, so that they could find him and they could have the joy that I have. And I think that's what he's saying here. It says in verse 75, I know, O Lord, that your regulations are fair. You disciplined me because I needed it. And we talked a lot about that yesterday. Now, let your unfailing love comfort me. He's like, I've been through a season of discipline. Now, would you let your unfailing love come and comfort me? 
just as you promised me your servant. I'm the one who serves you, God. I'm the one who puts my hope in your word. Can you now come and comfort me? Because um, the discipline, it was good for me, but it hurt. Now I need your unfailing love to comfort me. Again, it's just an integrity and conversation, very authentic. I love it. Surround me. Another version would say, encompass me. Completely, completely come around me, God, with your tender mercies so that I can live. This person is just kind of sometimes at the brink of death, at the brink of like in a pit. <laughs> he's got people taunting him. He's got just, he's hurting. He's frustrated. He's trying to do what's right. And things keep coming against him. People keep coming against him. And he's saying, Lord, I need you to wrap your tender mercies, your unfailing love all the way around me so I can live so I can make it. Have you ever felt that way? I know I've met so many people in, in throughout my ministry journey that have been in situations like that where they don't see any way that they're gonna even live and make it through that situation. But God's tender mercies came and encompassed them and surrounded them and enabled them to get through it. And I just wanna to say to you right now that maybe that's you right now. You do not know how you're gonna get through this moment that God would encompass you and surround you with his tender mercies so that you can live and that you can live the abundant life that he has given to you, that he died to give to you. He says, your instructions are my delight. He always goes back to the word, and we should do that too. Bring disgrace upon the arrogant people. Remember yesterday we learned that arrogant meant calloused, hard-hearted, unfeeling, dull, stupid people. He's saying, bring disgrace on them. I believe with all my heart that people who are evil, people who are calloused at heart and unfeeling and go about doing whatever they want and hurting people, that God will take care of them. And he's saying that, that this too. He said, Lord, let disgrace fall on their heads. I don't think we often have to try to bring correction to people. Um, I mean, we do if God tells us to. We bring correction to a brother in Christ or a sister in Christ who is saying they're a Christian, but they're living a hypocritical life. We are told to bring in love correction to that person. And God gives specific instructions how to do that. But a lot of times we want to go after the evil people and tell them they're wrong. Well, guess what? They're calloused and they're unfeeling and they're not going to receive what you're going to say. So our only hope is really God bringing um, that person to disgrace. God, usually what I pray for my enemies, Lord, that you would peel the layers off their calloused heart so that they can see, see what they're doing and feel with your heart, God, and see with your eyes. The Bible says pray for your enemies. And so I think here he's prayed for his enemies. He's putting his enemies in God's hand. He's saying, God, you take it and you handle this situation. He says, meanwhile, while you're doing that, God, he says, I will concentrate on your commandments. Let me be united with all who fear you, with those who know your laws. May I be blameless in keeping your decrees then I will never be ashamed. I love in the, in the New Testament, it says, I think it was Paul, and he says, um, live a life so that no one can criticize you. He was talking, I can't remember which church it was that the letter was being written to, but he's saying live a life in a way that that nobody can criticize you. No one can find fault with you. Even your enemies, when they come to accuse you, really they have nothing. And you know, our actions, the way that we live our life, um, sets us up to be able to withstand the criticism of people. When people go to criticize them, they can look at your reputation, they can look at your actions, and they're like, you know what? There's really nothing here. I know there was a season in my life where, where somebody in particular was really attacking my character and the Lord's like, just let them be because the things that they're saying are just going to fall to the ground because no one's going to receive them. If that person, if the people whose heart are soft and tender, they're not going to, they're not even going to receive it. They're not even going to hear it and they're going to dismiss it because they, they know your reputation. And so if, if you've lived your life in a way, I'm not saying I live my life perfect, but I know that in every situation I try to live it with integrity. 
and deal with people honestly and people who um, try to smear your reputation and come after you if you have lived your life in integrity then they don't have anything to stand on and so that's what he's saying here and I believe when we can put people in God's hands guess what we can let them go <laughs> and we can put them in God's hands and then his hands can go and start working in a person's life start chipping away at that hard heart and in the meantime we pray for them we bless them we do not get over here in a fight with them we just like the psalmist says in the meantime while you're dealing with this god i'm gonna stay connected to you i'm gonna stay focused on you because that is the way we keep moving forward when the calloused hard-hearted people are stuck they're perishing in their poison but over here we're moving forward if you want to move forward i want to encourage you today to let go of people let go of people that have hurt you let go of people you're trying to control and like the psalmist you turn your heart and your mind to god and you seek him with all your heart soul strength and mind and you love him and let him handle everything else over here well, I hope today has helped you. It was a little bit shorter than the other days. And um, I just want to pray for you. Just pray us out. Uh, God, I just ask you, Lord, to touch us. To give us the common sense, Lord, to follow you. Areas, Lord, where we're being hard-hearted and we're being stubborn. Lord, you just bop us over the head and help us, God, to just listen and to learn and to be willing, God, to walk after the ways of you so that we can walk in the way of everlasting and live victorious, impacting, influential lives. Lord, I ask you to touch my friend right now, whoever is watching this video. Lord, maybe they are in a situation where someone's hurting them. God, that they'll be able to let that person go and put them in your hands. And we trust, Lord, that you will bring justice to that situation. I also pray for my friend, whoever it is, who needs your tender mercies to come and encompass them because, Lord, they're tired and they're weary and they don't even know how they're gonna move forward. Father, that your mercies would rejuvenate them, that you'd fill them up with your joy and that the joy of the Lord would be their strength today and that they would truly be able to live the abundant life that you died to give us. God, we praise you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, my friend, and I'll see you soon for um, our next session, which will be verses 81 through 89, I think. Um, anyway, it'll be day 11, so... Thank you for joining me for day 10. Talk to you soon. Bye.